Hey there, Russ here. Welcome back to the shop. Well, I had an OTB moment here recently. And it's all around this bulb. If you remember, I, I did a project here. Well, I took a Ryobi battery and I made a little light that on and off switch. It was a pretty simple project. Didn't cost much money. You can do one of these, make one of these for about five bucks. And very simple. What makes this unique and what makes it easy to make for be able to use Ryobi batteries to give you some light, a room light. Um, what makes that possible is this bulb. And I just learned about this just before I made this video because that's what I, when I knew I could go from this to that. Anyway, but I've been thinking about this since then. I had another OTB moment. And rather than making several of these to be able to put around the house and use when the power goes out, why not just use my regular lights? That one thing that makes this thing unique is it has the A26 fitting on it. That's the same fitting that goes into virtually every lamp here in North America that runs off of 110 volts. And they all have this A26 fitting. So this bulb does screw into that light fixture. But if you plug that into the wall, screw this in there and turn it on, this bulb, it only runs on 12 to 24. Guess what? Yeah. So anyway, so in order to use this bulb in there, we are then going to plug it into a Ryobi battery, and then we'll be able to reuse our light that's in some place in the house. Simply, in less than a minute, I can convert it over to have it run on a battery without modifying that light in any way. The only thing we're going to do is change out the bulb and we're going to make a fixture that plug that light plugs into and the battery plugs into so that it will run then run off of that. You do have to watch your polarity and we'll talk about this as we go along. I uh, first thing I want to tell you is that this whole thing I what I like about it is is that if power goes out for a day or two. In fact it did on me uh a week after I made this one. And so I used this in the living room, and it works great for that. It power went out at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And then it was during that ice storm. And I didn't get it back until noon the next day. So I had both the e all evening long, I had to depend on lights like this. And also early in the morning, when it was time to get up and make some coffee, that type of thing. So they're handy to have, but... Why not just, if you got lamps sitting around your house in different places, you can use those just as easily. That way you can still turn them on and off like you normally would, only you can run it off of your battery. And this battery will run this light bulb for 13 hours. This is a 5 amp hour battery. It has 90 watt hours. This only pulls 7 watts. So, do the math. That's almost 13 hours. So, anyway, let's do a quick conversion so you can see what I'm doing. Then we're going to talk about what we're going to do with these, this concept, this idea. Because what you're going to see today is not a permanent setup, as you'll know. Quick note about these things. Like I said, 110, very bad. Believe me, I know. I blew one already. Anyway, uh... In order to make sure that I know what I'm looking at, I took these and I just marked them with this one with a red marker. But I did this one with a black marker, same thing. But I wanted to make sure that when I put these two up next to each other, I know for sure this is a 12 volt one. So when I look at that light, get ready to plug it in and turn it on, I know that I don't have this 12 volt in there because I have these all marked to be careful with them. So... The only time I would use this is when the power goes out. Or if I go camping, maybe. I don't know why you'd want to take a whole lamp. Maybe some work lights. And uh, <clears throat> those clamp-on work lights, they'd be perfect for this type of concept. So I actually ordered two. They're supposed to be here, I think, tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to try this whole thing on those. But I wanted to show you the first step since I was thinking about it. And then we'll talk about where it goes. But anyway, now that it's marked, let's do a quick conversion. You can time this to see how long it takes. It's really very simple. Unplug it from the wall. 
take the 110 volt light out and as you can see they look an awful lot alike so make sure you mark these and we're going to put this one back in now we plug it into our battery oh well to plug into the battery i have these receptacles that i've made and i have it where i can hook up two wires to it and i got alligator clips on them and i can just take this and i now have 19 volts at my alligator clips now I could clip these directly on here let's talk about po negative power real quick just for our polarity real quick on AC theoretically you can reverse these now America you can't reverse them it's a long story why um, <clears throat> they used to be able to but they are now only going into receptacle one way if you don't go in, you got to turn it over and put it in because these are not the same width, these two tangs. So anyway, the skinnier one is the load. That's the line connection. So that would be your positive because that terminal goes into the light fixture on that center post in the center of the light. That is the part that makes contact here at the center of the bulb. And those bulbs, that is the positive connection. The negative connection is the outside fitting. That's the negative. So, and the other post goes to that connection. So that's your polarity. Once you get it hooked up properly, you're fine. So I could take and just hook this directly here, negative to that one, positive to this one. And voila, we have power. But this is kind of a tight fit and makes me nervous to have that so close. So all I did was just for initial testing, because I'm doing several things here, and I'll be doing it off and on more than once. I cut this part off of an indoor power cord, and I marked it as my 12-volt one. Both ends are cut off. Remember, this one is the positive, this one is the negative. So I marked these accordingly and stripped them back so that I can hook them up. Positive here. And negative here and now I can easily just plug this in and now we have power so and when I'm done this is what I really like about it when I'm done I just unplug it you can tell that's a new plug. Those things are always so hard at first. And then I can take, plug it back in. Whoa, should not have plugged it in yet. <laughs> that's why I marked that bulb. I saw that immediately as I reached up there. But you do want to switch this bulb out. Don't forget, put your 110 volt back in. Then plug it in. And now... We can run off of 110 again. I didn't modify anything. Only takes me a minute to convert it either way. And it's good to go. So, if you're going to do this, be ready on a regular basis. You want to make some kind of connector that goes on there that has the receptacle. So now, knowing what we know, this is the setup for what I want to do. And I just want to know what you guys thought about it or any input from you guys. Because what we're going to do now is we're going to make a nice wood box. You know me, I love to make boxes. So we're going to take a wood box and we're going to take and put it on the outside. I'm going to have a 100, uh, 110 volt plug-in, um, maybe two. That way I could plug two lights into it instead of one if I wanted to to get a little more light. So I might go with a double, a duplex type. I'll put a Ryobi receptacle in there so that I can take my Rayobi battery, plug it in, take the lamp, plug it in the other outlet, plug in, and I have power from here to there. So that's a quick, easy way and no tools needed. Now, I, also on there, I want to put a bullet, uh, not a bullet, I keep saying that. It's a barrel connector. If I say bullet, I mean barrel. It's a barrel connector, 5521. 
It's one of the most common ones out there. It's on all the solar generators. And as you know, those have that 12-volt outlet. Well, this light runs on 12 volts to 24. I ran it off of the 18-volt battery, but you could run it off of any power pack that's a 12-volt source. So I could run this battery off of this 100-amp-hour battery pack or my 32-amp-hour battery pack down there. I could run this off of, run it off of them instead because this will run off 12 volts. So I'll put a barrel connector on it, and when you open the box up inside, you'll have a compartment to have some several uh, different leads. All of them will have a barrel connector on the one end, and then on the other end, on one of them, it'll be two alligator clips, so that if you want, you can plug this in and hook it up to a car battery, and now you got a box there real quick to take your work light and plug it in and have your work light there working. So I, the another set would be a barrel to a barrel connector because then you plug it into the box and you plug the other end into any solar generator. Now your solar generator is running that DC light off of that DC port. Yes, you could take this light and just plug it directly into the 110 outlet, but if you do that, that light is pulling a lot more power than if you're going direct. Because anytime you convert that from DC to AC to use this light bulb instead of the other one, that power is being used by that solar generator. So you have less energy. That battery won't last as long, basically, as it would off of a DC to DC bulb. So that's why I like these. I could run it off of any 12 volt system. I could run it off of any tool battery and you can run it off of a 24 volt uh, power system so I think that these bulbs are the ones to get now watch out I will give you a link to these bulbs let me say something real quick about these bulbs um, you want to make sure if you're going to buy some two important things you want to make sure it has the E26 fitting or, and some of them might say E27 it's the same E27 and E26 but it'll have that fitting. That is the standard fitting for all these lamps. Uh, and so you want to make sure that it fits in there. Now, of course, this does not apply to those across the pond and further. Uh, so I don't know how this relates to how you would do it. I'm sure that you would have the same type of setup. And it's not an E26. It may be something else. I don't know. But whatever, however you run those things over there, you'll have to figure it out. But the concept would be the same. To get a DC bulb that runs on the low voltage so that you can convert this light to low voltage light just by changing out the light bulb. <clears throat> and then we just need a power adapter to be able to plug any kind of 12 source, 12 volt source power to run it off 12 volts instead. Uh, in that box, besides those different leads I'll put in there, and I'll also have a compartment where this bulb will reside. So when I grab the box, I got everything I need to go to the lamp, hook it all up in one minute, and I have light in less than a minute. So it makes a convenient um, temporary light of any kind, wherever you would need it. And rather than having to use a flashlight, if you need a surface light to, or light to light up the whole room, then this is a pretty good way to go. So anyway... I think that's it in a nutshell. I've hit most of the bases on everything I kind of wanted to talk about here. If you have any questions about any of this, let me know. I like the idea, so I'm probably going to make something here sooner or later. So stay tuned. But I just thought I'd show you how the OTB thinking sometimes goes. And it starts with a concept like this. Then I kind of verify that, will that actually be practical and work? And so far, so good. So I think that uh, we're going to take this to the next level and see what we can do with it just for grins. And then maybe from there we'll think of some new ideas again. Keep jumping outside that box. That's the idea. So I'm sure we'll have some more ideas before we're done. And hopefully you'll have some out there too that you can share with me. Maybe before I get it made so I can make this project even better. So any thoughts or thought, any ideas about it, I would love to hear it. Um, <clears throat> Just leave everything in the comments. I do like reading them all. And I really appreciate when you guys talk to me. So, let me know I'm not talking just to the camera. Anyway, 
Uh, if you learned something here, you like that video, hit that like button. It lets me know I'm doing something right. And lets YouTube know that I'm still around. So, uh, most importantly, though, please, if you would, come back again. Because mm. I'm nowhere near done. And you might want to bring your coffee. So, anyway, we'll see you again very soon.